And as you can consider, it's kind of a slow week as far as new releases are concerned. Of course, we have the Music Madness tournament still heating up. Round 2 is still open for you guys to be voting on, so definitely go and do that if you haven't already. And not to mention, considering we uh, lost Mike Starr just the other day uh, at the age of 44 in Salt Lake City, Utah, I felt that it was kind of... Uh, a little bit more important right now that I go back and revisit another one of the albums that Mike Starr was on. Now, I would have reviewed Dirt, but I've already done that. And if you haven't seen that review yet, there is going to be a link in the description box that will link you to that particular review. That way you can see my feelings on that album, which I feel to be an absolute classic. But before the classic, of course, Alice in Chains had to get their start with their debut, and that's the album that I'm going to touch base with today. And that album, of course, was Facelift. Now, Alice in Chains was a band that already had been on the road and kind of been touring around and demoing their stuff out there for a couple of years. And the name Alice in Chains originally started as Alice in Chains, which is kind of like Guns N' Roses. Uh, it was done a little bit differently. So there was a little bit more of a glam edge there whenever the, everything was started. But once they started to get a little bit of mainstream curb appeal, so to speak, they made sure to make the name as phonetically correct as possible, spelling-wise as well, not to mention got themselves the best material possible out there for their debut. Especially considering directly after this, they were going to embark on the Thrash of the Titans tour, which is pretty freaking awesome. They were able to get started right away and get a lot of exposure to a lot of fans. The fan base grew very quickly, and well, you can see the success because of that. But Facelift was the album that kind of gave them their start. It was their debut. It was the first uh, album released by the band, and this is one that shows what Alice in Chains was capable of, especially in their earlier years, there was there's a lot of great strong songwriting throughout this entire disc, and there's also a lot of a lot of different things that you would hear on this particular record, as opposed to the records that would follow. <clears throat> For example, there are a couple songs on here that have a little bit more of an upbeat, a little bit more of a cheery side to them. Uh, not to mention, some of the lyrics are not nearly as uh, depressing. However, on a stark flip side, there are some in here that are just absolutely dark. There's a lot of a little br bit more of a brooding imagery here. And this is something we did see on Dirt and later on the Tripod. However, with songs such as Bleed the Freak, I mean, you can definitely see uh, where that side kind of began. And, of course, as the band would progress, there was definitely an evolution there that took it even uh, further down this twisted spiral, so to speak. Uh, however, some of the classic tracks that you're going to find on this album, of course, are the singles. We have Man in the Box, which kind of started it all for this particular band. A lot of people love this song, not to mention, I can still remember whenever a lot of my friends in my generation, whenever they were 14 and 15, were getting into this band, they didn't even call it Man in the Box. They called it the Jesus Christ song, of course, because of the brooding scream of Jesus Christ, deny your maker. And this is something that, well, yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of impressionable that way, and this is a song that definitely gave them a great start. We Die Young was a track that also attributed a lot of their success to. This is something that uh, it started off as a We Die Young EP prior to the facelift being uh, a full studio release, and this is a song that was transferred onto the album as well. Uh, songs such as Sea is Sorrow and I Can't Remember displayed this band's ability to not only shred and write kind of a little bit more of a poppy edge song, uh, but also transfer it into something a little bit slower and kind of just a little bit fun. You can actually hear some operatic vocals in I Can't Remember, which is a really, really awesome experience. It's something that I will always recall. Something else that I will always recall from this record, Love Hate Love, a massive song that just really undulates and drifts and tides its way through just what appears to be pure psychological hell. Pure romantic hell. And you can hear it just in the impassioned and just destructive screams that you hear at the end. And something that you can also pick up in the lyrics throughout. Now then you also have songs such as Put You Down, I Know Something About You that kind of border on a little bit of, well, beginner's rust. But these are good songs too. Definitely give them a chance. Uh, however, two songs that definitely shine on the latter stage of this album are Confusion, which is another kind of almost, you don't want to say ballad type because it's definitely not. It's a slower, a little bit more, as I said before, brooding song. And then, of course, Sunshine. Sunshine is another part that I will always remember from listening to this record. And that's mainly because it's a very upbeat, very cheery sounding song. Uh, however, the lyrics, though simple as they seem, are extremely powerful. And the vocal delivery... This is where you could really start to tell, especially on a lot of the midway parts of this album, just how powerful of a duo Jerry Cantrell and Lane Staley together could definitely be. 
And not to mention also on Confusion, Mike Starr also makes a vocal contribution on this particular song, uh, some backing vocals. All in all, just a fantastic release, and let me tell you, for myself personally, there's a lot of history between myself and this album. There's a lot of great memories of putting on this album after I came home from school whenever I was a teenager, playing Heretic on my old PC, and just enjoying it. And not to mention, I would repeat this album over and over again. It wasn't something that was one and done. I listened to this stuff over and over again to the point where I would pause the game, turn around, go all the way back to track one on my remote control because, you know, I had a boombox back then. I didn't have a computer that, you know, could do all this fancy MP3 downloading shit. I wasn't Cover Killer Nation yet. I was just Cover Killer School, co school Child, whatever you want to say. I was a tiny little Cover Killer. I wasn't a nation yet. Maybe I was just kind of like, I don't know, a municipality. But at any rate... Facelift is an amazing, amazing debut. Definitely step one of this journey and definitely a fine representation of what was to come uh, for this band. And of course, once again, like I said, there's a link to my Dirt review that's going to be in the description box. I'm also going to include a link for my review to uh, the latest Alice in Chains opus, which I just did a couple days ago, which was Black Gives Way to Blue. And I can promise you guys this, I will cover uh, the Tripod album. And I will also cover the two EPs, Sap and Jar of Flies. And then the Alice in Chains discography will be complete until we see the next record. But for now, let's enjoy the work that Mike Starr made and uh, was a part of. May he rest in peace. 44 is awful young. So today is a day for you to listen to Facelift, listen to Dirt. Hell, just enjoy the majesty that is Alice in Chains.